Good evening. I would like to call our January 24th regular school board meeting to order. If you'd please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Board members, are there any additions, deletions, or amendments, changes to the agenda? All right, seeing none, we are on our approval of minutes. Uh, we do have one uh, change to the agenda tonight. You have an emergency item that we placed on the agenda just prior to discussion to address um, the fiscal impact of the Eustis High School football field replacement. There was a ADA compliance issue that we needed to rectify, um, so that is on the agenda tonight. Dr. Mr. Johnson, do I need to deem that an emergency? Excuse me? Do I need to deem that an emergency item to be yes, placed? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so deemed, an emergency item. So we'll place it in discussion? Is that what you said? It is prior to discussion. Prior to discussion, okay. Okay, anything else? Okay, now we're on to the minutes. Well, I recommend approval of the minutes from the executive session for collective bargaining January 10th, 2022, and the regular school board meeting January 10th, 2022. So moved. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we are on our representation now. So, Superintendent, you want to recognize or introduce? Sure. We have a resolution to begin our evening tonight. So, Dr. Feltner will present the resolution. Good evening, Board Member Superintendent. It is my pleasure to bring you the celebration of Black History Month resolution. So, if you'll take a moment, I'd just like to read it to you for you to sign. Whereas Black History Month evolved from Negro History Week, which was established by historian Carter G. Woodson in 1926 to honor the accomplishments of Americans of African descent, and whereas African Americans have made unforgettable contributions to our nations as leaders in this arts, science, education, business, faith, community, athletics, the military, and government, benefiting all mankind, and whereas African Americans have often been at the forefront of our country's courageous fight for the rights, liberties, and freedoms of all Americans, and whereas the School Board of Lake County, Florida believes in the merit of education, respects hard work, promotes perseverance, and faith in self, and recognizes the importance of understanding the different origins, cultures, and heritages, heritages of all Americans, and whereas learning from the struggles and accomplishments of others and can strengthen the bond which we share as a national family, now, therefore, be it resolved that the School Board of Lake County, Florida, does hereby recognize February 2022 as Black History Month and encourages all schools in the district to plan lessons and activities to celebrate the important role African Americans have played in the growth and prosperity of our local community, state, and nation. Thank you. Okay. And he had to vote on those, too. Okay. Board members, so we have a resolution, and I would, I, Superintendent, do you have a recommendation about the resolution? I recommend the approval of the resolution 2022-01 recognizing February as Black History Month. Okay, board members? So moved. Second. Second. All, all three seconds. <laughs> Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thanks. That's 5-0. All right. We have our district spotlight today on criminal justice at Mount Dora High School. To Mrs. Owens. Superintendent, school board um, members, as you know, we use the district spotlight as a way of giving our community a peek into our schools to see some of the great things that our students and teachers and administrators are doing there. And today we're going to shine the spotlight on one of our newer CTE programs, the criminal justice program over at Mount Dora High School. So if you give me just a second, I'll get the video rolling. schools is proud to offer a total of 74 career and professional education academies. These programs provide a rigorous introduction to fields such as culinary arts, engineering, finance, and media production. These CTE programs foster academic advancement by providing hands-on job training and teaching employability skills. 
One of our more recent programs is Criminal Justice, featured at Mount Dora High School. These aspiring students gain valuable experience investigating artificial crime scenes. Some students play the parts of victims affected by criminal activity, while others ask questions and gather evidence in accordance with actual law enforcement methods. It's such a fascinating field. There are so many opportunities that most people don't even think about. I love to see the smiles on their faces. I love to hear them say, that is interesting, or I didn't know that. I love to see it when they get to use critical thinking and problem solving to figure something out. Ultimately, we'd like to get students certified in different areas. The first one would be as a legal assistant. They could walk out of high school and get a job with a law firm. Another one would be as a first responder, which is some medical training, and that would get them in the door to a firefighter or EMT program. Data shows that students who participate in these career academies have higher grade point averages, as well as higher attendance and graduation rates. Furthermore, these students struggle with fewer discipline problems as they learn to function together as a cooperative team. The Criminal Justice Academy takes this a step further and requires students to work well together in high-stress, sensitive situations. Not only are the students given a compelling puzzle to solve, they must do so by interacting with others in a way that is fair, considerate, and professional. It's very interactive. It's very hands-on. It's making a difference for me professionally because it's motivating me more to be a better person and to help my community and I definitely want to join the Marine Corps and then after that I want to get out and go to college. Uh, I want to be a cop. It shows the behind the scenes of how people actually deal with the process of how difficult it is. I think I'm going to be a lawyer. I like that type of stuff. I like lawyers, I like being in the court office, I like being in the midst of things. It's definitely showing me that it is possible for anybody. Our teacher actually does a great job at teaching us different ways to learn things. When you interrogate people and when you're starting an investigation, it's very, very important to be understanding and be sympathetic to those people or you can't always get the outcome that you want. And we have the proud principal, Marlene Strawn, here this evening. We appreciate your leadership in this and even being here tonight to celebrate and recognize your school with us. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Mrs. Owens, for sharing that with us. Okay. We are on public input. So we will begin with um, Richard Carlins. I apologize if I misspelled that or misspoke. If you... Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, how about Kim Cronin? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Superintendent, board members, um, you know, I don't miss an opportunity to tell you all how your employees are and how they're hardworking and understaffed and, un and low paid. And I'm not sure if you're all aware that we ca just came from a bargaining session tonight. And we do have an agreement. And I couldn't wait to send out an email to all the members tonight because I'm not sure if you realize what this is going to do for some of your employees. Some of your employees probably never would have that much money in their hand at one time. And I know probably some of them are crying tonight. But I wanted to thank you for your generosity. It's appreciated. Thank you. Made my evening. Okay. <laughs> Aaron Porter. Good evening. I was here a few meetings ago, and please bear with me for a demonstration on school counselor other duties assigned as I spoke to you last meeting.
The 13 seconds I have left of my allotted three minutes represent the 7% of my time since returning from winter break that I was able to devote to actually speaking and interacting with students in the role of a school counselor. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mrs. Porter. Kathy Smith, LCEA. Good evening, everyone. Um, Ms. Carnegie will probably speak later to this also, but um, LCA and Lake County School Board has reached a tentative agreement for this year's contract. Thank you for adding some money to this year's um, state funds so that we can actually have a salary increase for teachers and not just a little bitty tiny one. We will have a electronic vote, hopefully mid-February, and we'll see the results then. Want to also bring to your attention that FEA and LCEA have a project that they have developed and they have a grant and we have selected Leesburg High School and there is a mural project that we will be working with them as an art. We're just in the prior beginning stages so we're not for sure as to how this is all going to work and I can keep you updated as we, as we continue with the process. Also, this is the third week of the legislative session. Many educators are traveling to Tallahassee to focus on issues that parents, students, and educators do care about, such as addressing the teacher shortage. Last week, the Senate Education Committee spent too much time debating a bill which will actually drive more dedicated professional educators out of the profession. Legislators need to focus on issues which will strengthen our schools, like retaining teachers with multi-year contracts and reducing standardized tests. So hopefully some of these educators can actually get that across to some of our legislators. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for your leadership in the bargaining sessions, too. We appreciate it. You too, Mrs. Cronin. Mr. Johnson. Okay. We are on our consent agenda. Superintendent. I recommend approval of consent agenda items 8.01 to 10.03. Board members? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No? 5 0. So we'll start with our emergency item. So the emergency item is in front of you. Uh, this uh, came about as uh, after a recent review of the Eustis High softball field, where that was something the board had approved a while back, some uh, renovations to that field that were much needed. Um, the sidewalks were deemed not to be ADA compliant, and so to get into compliant, we need to get this done as soon as possible because a uh, tryout started, and we're, we want to make sure that before the season begins and we have guests on that field that um, our field is in compliance. So I'm asking for approval to um, get those sidewalks ADA compliant. Board members? So moved. Second. Oh, did you need a discussion? No, I was waiting for a recommendation, but no. <laughs> I, I guess that means that was short of recommendation. <laughs> I'm, I'm recommending I. approval of this item. So, so moved again. again. All right, I just took that I am asking for that as yeah, the yeah, recommendation. Yeah, 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 that's what it sounded like to me too. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, great. Thank you, board members. So now we're at 11.01, .01, a public hearing for policy 2421. Mr. Johnson. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Excuse me. The matter before the board, 11.01, uh, .01, is the tentative approval of policy 2421, career and technical education. Um, this and the other three policies here tonight are all amendments of existing policies. Um, if there's anyone here this evening that wishes to speak to this particular policy, please come forward to the podium at this time. <clears throat> I don't want to see anyone coming forward, Madam Chairman, believe it appropriate to close the public hearing. Okay, Superintendent. I recommend tentative approval of policy 2421, career and technical education. So moved. Second. Formers, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. 11.02, public hearing. Yes, ma'am. This item is for the tentative approval of the amendments to policy 7. Point, excuse me, 7100 facilities planning. If there's anyone that wishes to speak to this policy, please come forward. 
Seeing none, I believe it appropriate to close the public hearing. Superintendent. Recommend approval, or tentative approval of policy 7100 facilities planning. Board members. So moved. Second. Discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great, 11.03. Yes, ma'am. This is the uh, tentative approval of policy 8405, school safety and security. If there's anyone here that wishes to speak to this policy, please come forward. 8407, yes. Excuse me? 8407. 8405. Oh, okay. Wait. 80, 84, it's policy 8405, yes. Is that what you have, Mr. Matthias? I got 8407. That's, a, that's following 8405. Oh, oh, it's the next one. I'm what I had. <laughs> Sorry. Slow down. Sorry. Is there anyone else that wishes to clean, come forward at this time? Seeing none, Madam Chairman, I believe it appropriate to close the public hearing. Superintendent. I recommend tentative approval of policy 8405, school safety and security. So moved. Second. Discussion? Yeah, hey, there's, uh, there's one little line that I thought um, – Maybe we, we were going to fix. Um, in the first, when you flip the page to the first bit of green, it talks about annually. I, I think that the word initial could probably come out because um, now this is subsequent. It's not, it's not initial anymore. You see, you see where initial was there because it referred to the October 1st, 2019? Yes, but, sir. I meant to, I've already made that change. You've already made that change. No, I said I meant to. Oh, okay. Remind sure, sure. That. We should have removed so I don't know if that one requires formal amendment process or if we could just kind of I agree think that, that would be a technical change. All right. If we go forward. Sounds good to me. Perfect. Was that all? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right. Now we're on 11.04. Yes, ma'am. The 11.04 is the public hearing for the tentative approval of policy 8407 safe school officers if there's anyone here this evening that wishes to speak to this matter please come forward seeing none madam chairman i believe it appropriate to close the public hearing i recommend tentative approval of policy 8407 school safety officers so Board. moved so moved second any discussion all those in favor aye, aye. any opposed okay, okay superintendent I, I want to thank Ms. Strawn for being here tonight, as well as Ms. Sellis. Um, the Criminal Justice Academy is one of several brand new CTE programs that launched this year, along with our aviation programs. And those are um, really, um, in large part, due to Ms. Sellis, her leadership, and her team, who worked tirelessly to grow those programs and um, have been so successful in doing so with the board support and all the support of our schools. And I um, wanted to thank Ms. Strawn for being here tonight. Um, I, I did want to um, just echo the sentiments of Ms. Smith and Ms. Cronin tonight that we are very pleased to announce that we have reached tentative agreement with LCEA for the 21-22 contract. Um, I also want to thank uh, Ms. Smith and her team for their leadership as well as Mr. Farnsworth and his team. It's a, it was a long process, but it was a very collaborative process. And Ms. Smith, along with her members, came to the table willing to, to work together on behalf of um, the, our teachers, and um, so we're very grateful to that. And um, I also want to thank Ms. Cronin for her leadership, and um, I'm, I know that it was a, a good call today, and we um, are glad that you've already been able to share that message with all of our hardworking employees. I want to thank this board who um, you um, really wanted to make sure that pay raises were a reality for our teachers this year. It did require that we added some general fund money to the um, small amount that we do get from the state for salary increases, and I want to thank you for your commitment to that and for making sure that that's a reality for all of our employees. And um, so we'll be um, getting all that information out soon, and um, that voting will occur, um, I think, this week or next week with LCEA in, in hopes to, to ratify that contract. Um, and get some money into the hands of our folks that they so greatly deserve. So I want to thank everybody for that. Um, also, I just wanted to bring to your attention, um, last evening, I guess it was, Ms. Owens, um, she re received a phone call from a, a reporter, and um, their question was concerning to me. The question was, um, I understand that um, your school district is requiring employees who have COVID, who are positive COVIDed, to come back to work. 
Um, and I want to say publicly that that is absolutely not true. I also saw a similar statement on somebody's Facebook page. And so I'm not sure where that is coming from, but I want to say publicly that that is not true. We follow the Florida Department of Education decision tree, which clearly shows when and how people return back to, back to work and to school. It's the same for students and for staff. And if there is anyone who has information to the contrary, I would really like to know about it. So please reach out to me, reach out to any member of this board and let us know if that has happened. Um, I cannot tell you of a single instance when that it has occurred and I do not believe it is a true statement at all, but I certainly will check my facts and verify because it should not and will not happen. Um, so, but we need to know. And so, um, you know, rather than engaging in it on social media, please bring that to our attention and so that we can handle it. And I just want to say that publicly in case any of y'all have heard that, that we make sure that um, we do not allow such false information to continue to, to circulate. We certainly want to make sure that all of our faculty and staff and students are as safe as possible. Um, we have a few letters of condolence that went out this past week. Um, Wynona Smith is the mother of Valerie Robson. She's a teacher at Eustis Middle School, so condolence to her family. Also, Kristen, Kristen Ellis is the mother of Dana Lenham, who's a teacher at Eustis Middle as well. Mark Prescott is retired from Lake Technical College and the husband of Sue Prescott, so condolences to Sue. Um, and um, she's our bookkeeper in Choice Charter and Community Education, so those are all of our letters of condolence. So that's all I had for this evening. Thank you, Superintendent. All right, board member comments? I think that's where we are. Mr. Mathias, do you want to start? So I'll, I'll just speak to for just one second, and Mrs. Strong, I'm sorry she left because I was at her school last week and had an opportunity to sit in on the Abbott class. Uh, she's only invited uh, Wendy Simpson, shout out to her. She's a volunteer, and over eight years, I think, every year she invited me to sit in and see the hard work they're doing. And, and uh, I'm grateful that I was able to do it. I'm sorry it took so long, but it is amazing, just for the record. The, the work they're doing with the kids, the kids were engaged. Um, I watch them, how they work in groups, and how they're preparing them for college and or career, and um, it was very rewarding to me. And I had an opportunity to give um, a few minutes of wisdom, <laughs> and, and I will say this, that I will not give up my day job because as a teacher, I pretty much stink. So, <laughs> so that's, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Thais. Mrs. Cunningham? Well, it's been said by someone a lot more knowledgeable than myself that a group is only as strong or as, imp or as impressive as its weakest link. And I can tell you tonight I'm extremely proud to be a part of this group because I can say without a doubt that we did come together with a common goal and that was to try and do what was right for our employees as we should have. So I too am happy, Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Cronin, that we have something nice to share with our employees. Also, um, I had the pleasure today, along with the superintendent and um, Mrs. Luke and other members of the audience, uh, to take part in a read of, reading program at Treadway Elementary. Um, I had really forgotten how really neat it is to have 18 little people sitting on the floor in front of you, hanging on to your every word and saying to you, wait a minute, you, did you read everything on that page? <laughs> um, it was indeed a pleasure, uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself, and that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Cunningham. I'm good. Dr. Burns, you're good? Mr. Yeah, so I, I'm really thankful for the process that I, I observed this year through collective bargaining. You know, I, I go and I watch all those videos, all the bargaining sessions when they get posted to our website, and I, I could sense, you know, a, a great uh, uh, strength of collaboration between the, the various teams that had come to the table. And so I, hopefully that breath of fresh air just continues and, and allows for that sort of open communication, allows us to work together for the benefit of all our employees because we know who stands to benefit from that, not only the employees, but all the students as well. Um, you know, and, and then I was also kind of, kind of thinking um, about the, the unique struggles of a district of 42,000 kids that when you're this size, you know, it, uh, it becomes easy to feel like maybe you're, you're lost in, in all of that mix, that you're maybe, maybe just a number, but really I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna share something that I think just really speaks to the contrary to that. And, and that's, you know, a few weeks ago, Bill, before the meeting, you were sharing something with the superintendent regarding a student who really needed the services of Lake Hills, 
right? And you get 42,000 kids, and, and superintendent hones in on, on one. And then last week, I had a, a similar situation of a, of a family who had moved from uh, another country and looking at what this girl needed to graduate and, and her age and figuring out, is there a path for her, and what does that look like in our school district? And you took the time, and your team came together to figure out what that would look like. And once again, I, th I think it's just, you know, 42,000 kids, but this one mattered, you know, and it mattered to, to her, it mattered to that student. And there are just so many of those stories that just come together that really show you, you know, what, what the school district is all about. And so, so I'm really thankful for that. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ms. Luke, may I? Yes. yes. Uh, I forgot, and I don't know how I did this, but I'd also like to express gratitude to perhaps the hardest working um, CFO uh, I think Mr. Ward deserves some appreciation along with Mr. Farnsworth. Um, I sat for a lot of years on the, connect, c c on the bargaining team for the board on the side of SEIU, and that's not an easy task. And no one always knows those things that they do in those late hours that they stay up when they got to keep refiguring the numbers and trying to find the money. And those two gentlemen were very instrumental in helping us be able to come to this wonderful conclusion. So I didn't want it to pass without expressing uh, my heartfelt appreciation to the two of them. So thank you. And thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Um, well done, yeah, and all of you, I appreciate your sentiments to staff and to our bargaining units because I think that what you're hearing even tonight just really speaks to the teamwork that went into this year, and we appreciate that very much. It makes the, it makes everybody in this, on the side of we, we did what's right for our employees, and so we appreciate you guys very much and you guys. Um, I also had that I wanted to appreciate Katie Pearson. I don't, you guys, if you've ever had the opportunity to listen to her speak, I know she comes before us every once in a while, but she's such a dynamic speaker, and on... Friday, my, my UCF students who will graduate in May, and several of them will potentially be our future teachers, got to learn from her. And it's just, I mean, I learn every day. I'm invested in learning with them that, that I get to spend with her. And so I appreciate her taking the time to spend with future teachers. Um, I know that everybody's wearing different hats to Mrs. Porter's um, demonstration, which was very impactful. I think that we have a lot of people feeling that way right now, and I know that we are, off, we are asking so many people to give up their time, and we're hoping that the agreement that we have reached speaks to our understanding of the level of your commitment and frustration that you're feeling right now. And I appreciate you coming twice now to share on the, on the side of guidance counselors because we don't get to hear from, from direct guidance counselors very often. So thank you for coming tonight as well. Um, I also wanted to thank um, Dr. King this morning. I had emailed and requested a specific book. Dr. King is our proud principal of Treadway who invited us to the Read Across America today. And I couldn't find my math book and she found that book for me and those kids got to experience what it's like to show a million and a billion and a trillion and that's always a fun conversation to have with eight year olds. Um, so having said all of that, it's been a very enjoyable evening. So meeting adjourned. Thank you.